It's looking like Bill O'Brien's time at Alabama is officially about to come to an end, and whoever replaces him as the new offensive coordinator could change everything. I cannot emphasize this enough. I 100% believe that. And right now, as to where it stands, I think there's two guys that would be perfect for the job. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Hope all y'all are having an amazing Friday night. You know I am, because after I get done posting this video, I'm gonna make me a nice steak and some homemade mashed potatoes. And also, I'm really excited, and most of you know why. Because it's about to be Saturday, the best day of the week. We get to watch college football all day long. On paper, at least, it's not gonna be the greatest weekend. We don't have too many big-time matchups, but I think we're due to see some upsets. I'm very curious. Let me know in the comment section. What game are you looking forward to the most, and where do you think an upset's gonna happen? Or maybe you don't think there's gonna be any upsets. Let me know in the comment section. For me, and I know this may shock some of y'all, the game I'm looking forward to the most is probably Michigan and Illinois. I just think it's gonna be really interesting to see how Michigan comes out the week before the big time matchup against the Ohio State. Also to go up there with that one, I cannot wait for that USC game. I think Kayla Williams is gonna go off in a prime time matchup on national TV. I'd probably have USC and UCLA as my second game I'm looking forward to the most. And third, this may shock you as well, I got Tennessee and South Carolina. In my prediction video, I predicted Tennessee's gonna win this game by 30, but I wanna see how Spencer Rattler plays on a prime time game. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but it feels like everybody's forgot about them. That's gonna be good. And maybe some of you are looking forward to that Oregon and Utah game. The reason I'm not is because there's nothing on the line. Doesn't matter who's gonna win the game, you're not getting into the playoff. But anyways, I brought you here, sorry for the long intro, to talk about what's going on with Alabama football. If you're an Alabama fan, ACC fan, or really just keep up with Alabama at all, you know that the Alabama fan base hates, and I mean literally hates their offensive coordinator that goes by the name of Bill O'Brien. I'm not going over it, y'all understand why they hate him. His play calling is questionable at times. Although I think he gets a little too much hate, it is justified at certain moments. I'm not explaining what's led up to this point and how we got here. If you have no idea what's going on, go watch some of the previous videos. To make a long story short, all you need to know is that Bill O'Brien in Alabama is not working out. But, and I have a big but, what if I said all throughout the season? Yeah, Bill O'Brien, he's been questionable. Do I think he gets a little too much hate? Yes, but I also think the guy that should be getting more hate, and I don't understand why we're not talking about his job being taken from him, is Alabama's defensive coordinator, Pete Golding. What were Alabama fans saying after the Tennessee game? Oh, fire Bill O'Brien, he sucks, he sucks. Well, Alabama's offense scored 49 points. To me, at least, I can't speak for you, but to me, the problem in that game was not the offense, it was the defense. Once again, I get it, Bama fans, I know what you're about to say, well, match. There was a play call here that was stupid. There was a play call there that was stupid. But ultimately, the reason you lost the game is because you gave up 52. I'm sorry, I can't blame Bill O'Brien for that loss against Tennessee. I just simply can't. But here's where things start to get interesting, and it feels like this was the end-all be-all, at least to my humble opinion. Against LSU, with the best quarterback in the country in Bryce Young, Alabama had three straight three and outs. I can't remember. Maybe it was four three and outs, but I know it was three. If I'm wrong on that, let me know in the comment section. Look, I'm sorry. LSU is in a rebuilding year. There it's no excuse for Alabama with the offense they have, with the weapons they have, to have three straight three and outs. It doesn't make any sense to me. The offense throughout this year, it's been so inconsistent. You never know what you're going to get. For example, the LSU game. You're going to have back-to-back -back drives where you score touchdowns and you look like the best offense in the country. And then we're also, in the same exact game, going to have two or three drives where we look like we have no idea what we're doing. That's how weird of a year it's been for Bama. Some games, we look like a mediocre offensive team. Some games, we look like a really great offensive team. You never know what you're going to get with the Alabama offense. At least with the defense, you kind of know. I said it last year, I'm going to say it this year. The defense, they're not great, they're good. Compared to Alabama standards, no, the defense isn't good. But compared to the rest of the country, yes. However, here's where I even question this, and it pisses me off to the max. LSU, a team that is rebuilding once again. Yeah, they have a good quarterback in Jaden Daniels. I tried telling y'all he was going to give that Bama defense problems weeks before that game, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Anyways, like I was saying, LSU, a team that is rebuilding, a team with a first-year head coach, Brian Kelly, scored 32 on Bama. Did it go to overtime? Yes. So if you want to take that out, LSU had 24 points. This is what gets to me, though. It was the way they scored their 24 points. The same thing with Tennessee. It looked easy. I don't mind if LSU, Ole Miss, or anyone scores 24 points and they have to work for it. The problem with this Bama defense is it looks easy for other teams. Look, I get it 100%. I'll be the first person to tell you, hey, it's 2022. It's all about offense. I understand it. But just because college football is heading towards an offensive type of game, 
it doesn't mean the defense should just give up. I have a great comparison. It just came to my mind. Do y'all remember in 2010, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2013, when all these announcers would say, dang, this Alabama defense, it almost feels like they have 15 guys out there. I know some of y'all remembered that, and it brought back a flashback. And that's the cold hard truth. Alabama, five, six, seven, eight years ago, it did feel like they had 15 guys on defense. Fast forward in time to our current day, it now feels like Bama has eight guys on defense. So many guys are wide open. There's so many running lanes. It's just everything seems easier. Once again, take nothing away from Tennessee, LSU, or Ole Miss, or anybody that shredded Alabama defense, but it shouldn't be this easy. I apologize for the huge rant. I say all that to say this. It pisses me off when I watch that same LSU team only a week later struggle to score 13 points against Arkansas. And no offense to Arkansas, but they suck. Their offense is flat out terrible. They had like a four string quarterback and their defense is it, just not that good. And I'll leave it at that. And you mean to tell me Arkansas's defense can hold LSU to 13, but yet Alabama we can't even keep them under 30? That's what gets to me. Nobody watching this video can try to sit here and tell me, well, Matt, maybe Arkansas has more talent than Bama, because they don't. Everybody with a four IQ out of 100 understands that Alabama has the best talent in the world. So maybe, and this is just a conspiracy theory, I guess, maybe Pete Golden ain't the guy for the job. Maybe his play calling ain't so hot. Alabama fans ain't ready for that conversation, because all I see them ever talking about is, oh, Bill O'Brien sucks. Fire Bill O'Brien. Look, I get it. I'm in the same boat as you. I think Bill O'Brien in Alabama, it's not a good fit. But if anyone needs to get fired, it's Pete Golden. Speaking of Pete Golden, I also said all that to say this. Apparently, according to Nick Saban, Pete Golden's doing a great job. Or not a great job, a quote-unquote very good job. Check out what Saban had to say about Pete Golden. And this was only a day ago. I think he's done a very good job with the personnel that we have, dot, 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 dot. I love hiring younger guys like that and letting them grow and develop in the organization. He's certainly done a fantastic job of that. Hmm. Kind of get the feel going over that first sentence. He's saying, hey, Pete Golden... He's working with what he's got, trying to infer that Alabama doesn't have that much talent on defense. Let me know your thoughts on that quote, and I only read it off to you because of what Saban said only a couple of days before that. It was only about a week before he said that he was asked about Bill O'Brien, and he said, quote unquote, I don't assess any coordinator publicly, especially not before the season is over. When he said that about Bill O'Brien, I was like, hmm kind of get to feel like they're about to part ways. But I was like, eh, maybe he just don't want to talk about it. And then what do you know, a week later, he's talking about Pete Golden. But remember, he just said he's not going to talk about his coordinators. Hmm, seems a little fish if you got to ask me. You just said you're not going to talk about any coordinator. Then a week later, you're going, oh yeah, Pete Golden, he's doing a good job. I don't know, it doesn't make too much sense to me. Like I said, in these interviews, don't expect Saban to talk bad about a coordinator or whatnot, because that's just not what he's going to do. It's the same thing with a parent. You're not going to discipline your child in public, you do that in private. So going over those two quotes, you can kind of get the feeling vibe that even Saban is tired of Bill O'Brien. I can't blame Saban. I don't think Bob is as bad as everyone tries to make him out to seem, but I also feel like him in Alabama is not a good fit. I think Bill O'Brien will succeed somewhere else, just it's not working out at Bama. It's looking like Bill O'Brien's time at Alabama is officially about to come to an end, and whoever replaces him as a new offensive coordinator could change everything. I cannot emphasize this enough. I 100% believe that. I don't think Bill O'Brien's done a terrible job. I think he's done a good job, but Alabama good is not enough. You gotta be elite. And right now, as to where it stands, I think there's two guys that would be perfect for the job. One of those being my personal favorite, and it may be controversial, Dan Mullen, and the other being Garrett Riley. I already know everyone's gonna know Dan Mullen, no introduction needed, but a lot of people don't know who Garrett Riley is. Well, let me offer you some insight. You heard of Lincoln Riley, haven't you? <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Garrett Riley, that's his brother that's currently at TCU. The resume for Garrett Riley, it speaks for itself. He's offense coordinator at TCU, and they're currently undefeated. I mean, heck, they hung up 55 against Oklahoma. And may I remind some of y'all, it could have been 100. They took their foot off the gas and showed mercy. I got Lincoln Riley as my third best head coach in all of college football at this current moment. I think he's an offensive mastermind, and his brother is not too far behind. I think it would work out well. It'd be the same kind of scenario at Lane Kiffin. You got a young guy who is a genius. Like I said, not I'm not gonna say too much for Garrett Riley because his resume speaks for himself. Moving on to this one though, and although I would like Garrett Riley, it's my personal favorite, Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen is more in a situation like Lane Kiffin was when Alabama hired him. Left Florida in a terrible position just like Lane Kiffin did with USC. Kind of feels like nobody wants to give Dan Mullen a shot and well, 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 we've seen this story before. When nobody wants to give a coordinator a shot, who swoops in to save the day and send him to the rehab center? 
Nicky Nick Saban. I also think it'd be a great opportunity for Dan Mullen because he can prove once again he deserves a big time power five job. The Dan Mullen one is really intriguing because he's very polarizing. You either like him or you hate him. No in betweens. I just so happen to like him and here's why I think he'd be great at Alabama. The reason he failed at Florida is number one, he wasn't the best leader ever. Number two, he's not too great at recruiting. All he cares about is calling plays. Dan Mullen doesn't care about defense, he just wants to score points. Fortunately enough for him and Alabama, if they do consider him, that's all they need him to do. If you're the offensive coordinator, you have one job. Put up points on the board and call plays. I think Dan Mullen would fit in just fine. Now, when it comes to recruiting, yeah, maybe he's not the recruiter like Bill O'Brien is, but who cares? We don't need Dan Mullen to recruit. I get it kind of sounds arrogant or whatnot, Alabama just speaks for itself. You don't have to say too much. As to where it stands, those would be my top two on my current wish list. And at number three, if I had to pick one, this may be controversial, it would be just to stick with Bill O'Brien. If we can't get Garrett Riley or Bill O'Brien, I don't see a better option out there. I'm very curious. Maybe there's some other guys we can talk about. If there is, drop your comments down below. I'm curious. We may make another video talking about potential candidates for the offensive coordinator position. Last but not least, though, don't click off. We got to talk about this. A couple days ago, Nick Saban had some of the former Alabama players come back, and this is what he had to say about it. Here's what Saban had to say about former running back Bo Scarborough coming back. Bo Scarborough was here today and he put his finger on the table and said when we played here we were making sure that the other team when the game was over would say we never want to play them again that's the kind of culture that we want to recreate i agree 100 percent i've said all year long alabama they don't have that fear factor anymore. They lack that dog-like mentality. It doesn't feel like Bama has those dudes that it's football or nothing. Now guys are like, eh, it's just another game. I did want to share that with y'all, though. I'm very curious. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about down below. But, uh, right away,